guys, what's up? It's Zelo, and today I'm going to be doing a Photoshop tutorial, my first Photoshop tutorial, and I want you guys to go ahead and post a comment and tell me what you guys think. I really want to hear your opinions, what I need to change, what I need to fix. I'm really curious about all that. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into it. So basically, this tutorial is going to show you guys, I'm going to make a ribbon, I'm going to show you guys how to make it fold, how to like bend it, and all like the shading stuff. So, without further ado, uh, let's do... 3,000 by 1,500. There you go. And we're going to go ahead and grab our rectangular tool. And we're going to make a strip like a ribbon. And let's not do it out of frame. Let's do it like right there. Actually, let's do two halves. So there we go. I'm going to rasterize it and flip it. So here we go. Uh, now that we have the left side of our ribbon, uh, let's go ahead and choose a color. Um, in a giveaway that I don't think has been released yet, or it might be by the time of this video, I'm not 100% sure, but I chose about a green like this, and so that's the green we're going to use. I also threw a pattern on that, but we'll do, we'll save the pattern. Actually, let's do the pattern now. Pattern, uh, I think it was this one, it was that one. It was that one with an opacity set. I think it was overlay. Yeah, okay, there we go. And that's just a checkerboard pattern right there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rasterize this layer. And then we're going to create a new rectangular layer. Make sure it's black. And if um, your colors are like, say that's red, and you want to uh, flip it back to where it was the D default, just hit D, and it sets it back. And then to flip them, hit X. And then it just changes them. It's a really uh, useful technique that I use a lot. But basically, I want to make a perfect square. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's what I'm going to do. And then you want to kind of tilt it a little bit. Not too much, but just enough. And then you want this layer to go behind that layer. And let's choose a gray color. Uh, a bit lighter. Okay, that works. And then, so I'm going to make it a little bit more rotated. Okay, there we go. So that way it looks like it's bending. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our uh, burn tool. And let's make it a little bit smaller. And then we just want to kind of darken up the edges. And I want to make sure that that looks like. There we go. And that kind of added a realistic shadow effect to it. And then you just want to make sure that it's lined up with the corner so it looks kind of folded. Uh, there we go. And then when you want to duplicate uh, your current uh, green layer, and you just want to connect it to that bottom layer, just like that. And we're going to go ahead and, I guess we'll leave it just like that for now. And But the only problem with how this looks right now is these just mesh. So you want to go ahead and grab your burn tool, and then you want to go on the bottom layer, this layer. You want to raise the size. You want it to be the third soft brush. And you just want to give it, you know, like a realistic shadow, like a ribbon would have. And then you want to go ahead and grab your dodge tool and then go to this one. And then you just want to lighten up the edge just a little bit. There you go. And then that sets the color tone. And if they don't look like they are the exact same layer. And then this right here makes it look like it's folding. And you can see the back of it. And now what you want to do is you want to group them, duplicate them, and I you group by hitting Command G or Control G, and then you duplicate by hitting Command J or Control J. And now we're going to hide the base layer. The reason I hide that layer is because if I ever want to change something, I can always go back to the original layers. And then you want to hit Command E or Control E to flatten the image. And let's go ahead and get our guides. And if you don't have guides, uh, just hit Control or Command R. And then you can just drag them out. It's really simple. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to grab our flattened layer. We want to move it halfway. And then let's duplicate that horizontal. And connect those. And there we go. You have what looks like a ribbon that was bent in. And now I'm going to go ahead and flatten the two these two layers. And then what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to this is I guess I mean I just flatten them just because you know I like to flatten them you know it's just the way I do it but what I'm gonna show you like a different way this is more of like an indent you know like if the uh, uh, ribbon was indenting into the background so what you want to do is you want to it doesn't really matter what size I'm just copying the size of this one and let's flip it 90 degrees okay and then we're gonna go ahead and cut the section out of it and then all that will be a new layer okay so now we have two new layers one for the bottom one for the top and a gap and now we want these colors to be the same as that background or that uh, ribbon so they're the same and then we want to rasterize layer styles which is one of the things I love about CS6 is you can just instead of converting it to smart object and then rasterizing it again you can just rasterize the layer styles and then we're gonna group these two and then we are going to go to the groups blending options and we're gonna do a pattern and then we're going to try and find the exact same pattern we used there. And then you want to set it to over there so it matches. Okay. And to have that. Okay, so now that we have our basic uh, ribbon layers, we want to focus on where we're indenting, which would be this section right here. So we're going to go and create a new layer and a rectangle tool. And you want to make sure the rectangle is the exact same length as, uh, as your... Uh, ribbon and I think I did this one well one pixel off so I'm just gonna duplicate there you go so it's good now we're gonna drag this under uh, our ribbon and then we are going to make it one pixel under the ribbon and then we're going to right click hit perspective and now I really messed up with this this I actually made a mistake here and um, basically, it needs to be halfway. Uh, so you want to make it as near halfway as possible, or you can do it lower or higher depending on how your lighting and how your image is looking at it. So we want it to be from here to there. And then you want to go ahead and do the same thing, perspective. And then you want to drag it in. Then you want to duplicate, flip vertically, and drag it in for that size. And there you go. You now have the basic shape of your indent. And then you want to let's go ahead and go, oh I didn't mean to, uh, merging on this one. And then you want to go to color overlay, and let's try and pick the same gray as we did. For the back for the backing right here I don't think I can but let's see here it's a little bit lighter okay so now we have our gray or did it, it could be the exact same color too I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do the same uh, greenish color here same color and then rasterize layer style so there we go and now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and grab the line tool and make sure it's set to one pixel and then since we already have our middle section drawn out we want to go ahead rasterize the layer set the opacity to uh, I actually set the fill layer and then we can duplicate it invert there we go uh, so basically what I did there was after the line tool I set the fill layer by holding shift and I set it to 20 and then I duplicated the layer uh, with Command or Control J, hit Command or Control I to inverse the black to white, and then use your or then you have to press V to get your uh, selection tool. Is that is that what this is called? Move tool. It's the move tool. And then you want to press up on your uh, arrow key, and that gives it the indented look. And we could actually duplicate that and do it both ways. Uh, no, it doesn't look as good. Okay, now you want to merge those layers. And then you want to basically hold Command or Control on this rectangle layer. And then select Inverse, Delete. And that way, 
this indent right here is only on uh, the folded area. And now what you want to do is grab your uh, rectangle marquee tool and you want to select the upper half just like that. And then you want to go back to this layer and we want to grab our burn tool and you just want to you know make it look a little bit darker in this section just like so and then you want to do the same thing with the bottom half but with the bottom half you could either do the dodge tool and these are you can flip these around it just depends on what your lighting is like I'm gonna do my lighting coming from the top so that means this layer would be darker and this one would be lighter and just like so so we have that to where you can sort of see the indents coming alive and now what we want to do is we want to duplicate oh wait which layer is that yeah we want to duplicate that we want to merge and we want to hide the original layer and then we want to grab the dodge tool and we just want to highlight the surrounding edges and there you go so then it kind of gives it the effect that it is indenting but it's not quite complete yet and what you want to do is now we want to make it to where we can see where it's puncturing the paper I had a phone call so back into the tutorial so now we want to make it look like the image or the ribbon is puncturing the background uh, now this effect is really easy um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new layer and we're going to select the upper half of this one or the upper corner of this ribbon and then you want to drag it to about not exactly like you want it to be where you can see it you can see the difference and then you want it back up to this half and then we're just going to do that to like halfway and there we go and then we want to go ahead and fill and this is white so we might just want to do a black uh, puncture but now we want to do this completely under the rectangles and there we go that is our sort of puncture right there and now if we flip that horizontally we can drag it to about the same spot right there and let's do a different let's do uh, this color right here this blue on blue and so then what you want to do and the reason I did that was because if you take this these uh, black layers and you set them to like 30% opacity or, or fill because you want to fill it because we're gonna add some effects to it and then it doesn't look as black let's see here duplicate boom I set it to 100 uh, I made a little bit of a mistake I don't think they're even Let's duplicate it, move to there. There we go. Okay, now they're going to be even. So now I'm going to set it to like 50% opacity or somewhere around there to where it looks like it's puncturing the area. And then we want to go ahead and double click on it. And then we want to do outer glow, set that to white, and to overlay. And then what that's going to do even more is that's going to give it this nice outer effect that uh, it's puncturing it. And then right there you have the ribbon that is just punctured through the background. Kind of gives it a 2D effect. And then if you're going to do these ribbons crossing, you want to select that one, grab your burn tool. Uh, I mean, you can do this with a drop shadow too, but I just like using the actual tools. So there we go. So now it, everything looks uneven today. And there we go. See, it still looks uneven. Let's try this. Let's do from here to here, and then from here to there. Yeah, that still looks very uneven. I have no idea. Um, let's see here. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then you want to. It's basically all you have to do. I don't know what this is right here. Let's erase it. Okay. There we go. And down here, hold on. Uh, erase. I'll we'll just erase the extra extras. And then what you want to do is you want to select this layer. And then you want to grab your dodge tool. 
and you don't want to do the entire thing you might even want a smaller brush than this and you just want to basically highlight the sections you don't want to do the middle and I would even take the sponge tool and kinda uh, that looks pretty good right there and then it looks like they're as if they're overlapping. So maybe since the uh, Christmas holidays are slowly coming up, it's only September, so we still have a few months. But say you wanted to do like a Christmas card or whatever with a ribbon border, that that would be how you would do this. And if you guys want to go and download this, the link will be in the description to download it at 30 likes. Uh, I did a giveaway and I said 30 likes, and it got 30 likes in like an hour, two hours. So. I really believe you guys can get up to 30 likes. I just want to thank you guys for watching and hold on. I do seal, 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 seal. We're gonna open up my seal to approve this background or this kind of tutorial or whatever. And yeah, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching and supporting. Uh, I want to get to 200 uh, likes. If you guys like the backgrounds and stuff that I'm giving, or 200 likes, 200 subs. If you guys like the backgrounds and giveaways and stuff, I'm going to keep doing them. Uh, but just wait until I get to 200 subs, guys. That's when the real stuff comes out. And I just want to thank you guys so much for your support. And it has been Zelo, and I'm signing out.